Yo, Elliot, I've been a Catholic my whole life. However, I recently started praying more deeply. This caused a problem as I easily get distracted with my thoughts. What should a man think about when, when praying? So one of the books that I refer to in this program uh, by Ignatius Bryanishov, who was a, a Russian Orthodox uh, bishop, and, uh, and, and, and he was one of the guys who kind of um, taught, taught, he taught in monasteries. What is a monastery? A monastery is where monks go. And what is a monk? A monk is a person who dedicates their lives to prayer, right? To a life of prayer. Their entire life is, is dedicated to prayer. That's what they do. That's what a monk does, right? And so he wrote both books on the challenges that monks in monasteries would face, particularly as it relates to their, to their prayer life. And, and the book that I refer, I'm referring to now and that I refer to you to read is The Arena by Ignatius Brianerstub. Amazing book. And he, in that book, speaks about distractions when praying. And he, he gives some reasons as to why distractions happen, happen, but then he also speaks as to what we should do. And so I'm going to sort of relate some of that information here to you, first of all. Now, he says that there are three reasons why we get distracted when, when praying. Number one, he says, is the world. The world distracts us. The world distracts us, meaning that there are things happening in the world that come into our mind, right? Like, uh, do, do I have enough money to pay the rent this month? Or um, who won the baseball game? Or just things, worldly things. He says that there were worldly distractions that come into your mind. And he says also to our fallen nature. Our fallen nature is what distracts us, right? And that is more in terms of like our emotional content, right? Like, so we'll start to get distracted by lusts, right? Or angers or anxieties, right? So this is more of an emotional. So you got the mental, which is more like the world, right? The world, you might even just be praying and all of a sudden like a pop music song comes into your head, right? Comes into your head, what are you gonna do? Uh, but then there's, the, there's worries, right? There's, there's fears, there's lusts, there's... Things of, the, things of the emotion, things of the heart, mind, heart. And then he goes on to say, and then the third one is uh, demonic attack. It's from the spiritual. And he asserts that there are demons watching you. And they hate to see when you pray. And so they'll do all they can to influence your thoughts, to influence your feelings, to distract you. Even, you know, even as far as creating weird things to happen around you. This happened to me the other day crazy now i don't i i believe that it was a demonic attack uh but i'm not sure maybe it was just coincidence but i chalked it up to that because it was an interesting situation where uh my daughter had a soccer tournament and we went to the tournament right it's here in florida here in uh, uh lake county florida but we bumped into one of her old friends from back in Pinellas County, right? And this is like her only friend from her soccer team. The, the, you know, she spent a lot of time with this kid. And they got, we got together. Now, the interesting thing about this little girl is that her parents are a lot like Colleen and I. They're homeschoolers. They're Christians. They're conservatives. We think, act, behave, talk a lot alike. And I kind of knew this, but I didn't really spend much time we didn't, I didn't get to know them that well, but I knew that they were on the same page as me. And in a world, you know, in the world that we live in, it's tough to come by people who are like almost like exactly like you. So it was like this, this was a great couple. So we decided to link up with them and have dinner. And as dinner was coming, as it was being prepared, I was preparing to say grace, right? So we, would, we were going to pray, just like you're talking about praying. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray over our, our meal that day. And one thing after another seemed to just get into our get in front of the way get in our way for praying it was wild so first uh there was a mistake with one of the orders so we're all kind of waiting and then i think it was one of my children had a mistake with one of the orders so it's like okay we'll wait a little bit longer right and everybody kind of knows like we're waiting to pray then that was the resolved but one of the one of her, their children their order didn't come yet and it was like okay well how much longer is this going to be and then so finally it came and then as that came, the, there were, there were, the server was coming with water and then all the water fell, right? So she had, a, she had a, a, a plate, you know how they do, and they come out with water and all the water fell. 
And it was like one thing after another just kept delaying our prayer. And so a part of me, you know, who knows if it was true or not, but a part of me was like, I think that I think there are demons trying to stop us. I think demons saw, I think in a spiritual realm somewhere, an opposing force recognized that, oh, these, this is a powerful family. These are two powerful families getting together, ready to pray over these meals. I had better distract them. And that's what they'll do. They will do it. They will distract you. So this is where you are and this is where you find yourself. This is the advice of Ignatius Brianna Shav. He says, in particular, as it relates to demonic attack while you're praying, right? And this is where he kind of uh, went with his advice. Because when it, comes to the, when it comes to the mind, he says, you just shut it off. You read. And this is why mantra is so important. Let me go back to that. So the mind. Prayer is a training of the mind. Actually, the word meditation is a training of the mind. Mantra is a training of the mind. And so one of the things that, uh, that Orthodox Catholics would do is use a simple repetitive prayer. And they would get themselves into a state, into a state of focus with just this one prayer. And they call it a prayer of the heart. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. That's number one. To, to repeat that prayer over and over in your head to train your mind, right? To train your mind. Number two, he says then start to coordinate that prayer with your breath in order to calm your heart, right? Because we all know that the breathing and the heart is associated with it. So... You would train your mind with the, with the prayer first to control what? The world from entering your mind. Then you train it with your breath. So you inhale on the Lord Jesus Christ. Exhale on the have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ. So what you're doing in essence is you're praying into your heart so that your heart doesn't go astray with fears, anxieties, things of, uh, uh, you know, our fallen nature. So you're praying it into your head, but then you're praying it into your heart. There's a really good book where, that's all about this prayer. Um, I have it here somewhere. I wish I would have pulled it out for you. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's called the Jesus Prayer. The Jesus Prayer. The whole book is all about this prayer that I'm sharing with you right now and how to use it as a bulwark against attack and against distraction and against our fallen nature. So number one is in the thought. Number two is in the heart. And number three, he says, use it as a weapon against demonic attack. So he says, visualize. And I also heard another uh, Orthodox monk, I think Father Pasios, call it, uh, he called it your weapon and that each prayer is a bullet. And he says, just shoot the bullets at the, at the, at the uh, demons. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. And just imagine, boom, it's going out. And it's like, you know, these, these bullets are protecting you. They're, they're, the, the demons are having to dodge these bullets and get out of the way because, man, you're coming with this strong prayer. And, Jesus, and, and demons hate the word Jesus. They hate Jesus' name. The, the name of Jesus, Jesus' name has power. Did you know that? Jesus' name have, has power. And I, I'm even like just trying to discover the truth myself about a lot of these things, right? Because Jesus' name has been changed. Like his first name was, his name was Yahshua, Yahshua, Yeshua, Jesus, right? Jesus. But I don't even think that it matters how we say it. I think it's the sentiment from which it proceeds. Jesus, Yeshua, Yahshua, Jesus, whatever you want to say. But the word has power. You know how you know the, the name Jesus has power? Because people who are under demonic influence hate the name of Jesus. They almost become, and I know I was there too because I used to carry an antichrist spirit in my life. I didn't know I did, but the world, the world, the world molds you into an antichrist, having an antichrist mind. That means that anything related to Christ, you, you cringe at. And I remember when I was when I was unaware, and so, as soon as somebody started speaking the name Jesus, I would I would almost cringe. And I know people cringe too when they watch my videos and I talk about Jesus because they say it in the comment. They're like, Elliot. I like everything you say, but why are you talking about Jesus, right? They hate that name. And, it, and, and Jesus says it, it's in the Bible, and, and, uh, and, and St. Saint, Saint Ignatius and other monks remind you that word disturbs demons. That name, Jesus' name, the name of Jesus disturbs demons. 
And so you got to say that name. You got to be comfortable with the name of Jesus in your own life. You got to be able to say Jesus in your own life. And you got to use the name of Jesus as a weapon. They run. They run when they hear the word, they hear the name Jesus. So you could even say out loud while you're being distracted, say out loud the name of Jesus, right? Because the prayer of the heart is an internal prayer. It's a meditation. But what he's saying in this instance is say it out loud. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ. And you have to say it with a humility. Because if you if, if think about like, you know, because I said gun. So you think about a gun. It's like you arrogant. You just like uh, pick it off. I'm picking off demons, right? He says, no. He says, you say it, it, it uh, like you're, sub, you're submitting yourself to Christ. You're saying, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Meaning, come and protect me. Come and, come and fight for me. Come and destroy this demonic attack upon me, right? So these are all ways, uh, according to Brianna Shav, to enhance your prayer uh, against distraction. And I'll leave you with this one last piece, too, because this may be helpful. It was something that uh, someone brought to my attention also. But the, the word uh, prayer, from, when I, from what this person was saying to me, whether I know it's true or not, but I thought it was resourceful. He said the, the word prayer in, um, in Hebrew is a self-reflection. So a lot of times, you know, especially Christians, we think that prayer is a petition. It's always a petition, Right. God, do this for me. God, give this for me. God, bless me with this. God, and it's always a petition. Uh, and then if you do it, you know, you go a little bit deeper, you recognize that also it's, it's worship, so it's admiration, and it's, it's an act of contrition, you know, recognizing our place, uh, thanks, and all that. But this one individual brought to my attention that it's just as important to be in self-reflection during prayer, right? And prayer is a self-reflection. It's a, it's a calling to account, calling oneself to an account. So if you find that you're getting distracted, that's a part of calling yourself to account, right? You get to then be objective about those thoughts or those feelings or that, those, you know, being, thinking about it in terms of demons is being very objective too, but taking personal responsibility for our thoughts and for our feelings is very, very important. So it's three parts, all right? We're fighting, we're fighting three battles at once, the mind, the heart, and spiritual attack. And so in this way of self-reflection, we can work a little bit more on the thoughts and on the, on, on the heart, right? And so um, I hope that helps, man. That was a, that was a mouthful. But uh, there's, there's so much wisdom that's available to us by reading the lives and the works of the saints. Never stop reading. As a Catholic, as a Christian, never stop learning about your faith. And I think the best place to go to learn about our faith is by reading about the early church and the early fathers and, you know, uh, what they struggled with and what they dealt with a thousand years ago. And uh, because that way it's, it's, it's free from a lot of modern and postmodern conventions that is a lot more like therapy, what religion has become is like, uh, I forget how Rob Dreyer calls it in the Benedict Option, which is a book I'm looking at right now. But he says that it's, 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 a, it's a form of like therapy, right? That's what the, the Christianity has turned into sort of a new age uh, perversion. And if you read the, the, the writings of the early church, early fathers, early monks, uh, you'll find it very, very, very nourishing to your soul outside of this therapy that it's become. It's not therapy. <laughs> it's spirit. All right, bro. Hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week, and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. That sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.